We're back with Mono White Solemnity Angels, and this time we've made a few changes to the deck. But first, if you haven't already seen the first video, now would be a good time to go check that out. And for those of you who have seen the video, let's dive right into it. For the main deck, we've added two Ghost Quarters instead of two Planes, and we've done that to help our matchup against Tron, because if they get all three of their Urza lands out and they hit seven mana, they can drop all his dust, and that's going to board wipe us because that destroys all colored permanent. Now the downside is that Suppression Field makes activated abilities cost two more to activate, so that includes Ghost Quarter, so in addition to tapping Ghost Quarter, we'll need to pay two to do it but it is worth the drawback since winning against tron for us is pretty rough now we've made quite a few changes to the sideboard the first big change is that we had two rural laws sideboarded in, in the original version and that was to help us against storm but we already have four leyline of sanctity's main deck so that kind of covers it so rural law really not that necessary instead we've added two chalice of the void chalice of the void works really well in our deck because we only have one card that costs one mana which is periphery nodes main deck and it helps in matchups like grixis death shadow where almost every single card costs one mana and we can also bring chalice the void in against living end which costs zero mana so you play chalice for zero and it stops living end from firing another change made was removing one path to exile and one periphery notes for two grand abolishers and if you saw the last video you know why i put this card in here because playing against blue control sucks ass so while this guy's out our opponent can't play spells on our turn and the best thing is that after game one our opponent usually gets rid of their creature destruction because they see we only have these angels so things like fatal push path to exile lightning bolt these things come out which means grand abolisher will be safe also a cost two white mana to cast which means it's going to help our devotion to white so that's pretty convenient the last addition here is nevermore so i had to take out one stony silence for it which is a bit of a downside but nevermore was a card that a lot of people mentioned in the comments of the last video and it works pretty well in our deck because there are certain matches that we really have a hard time with like eldrazi tron where they have all his dust we can name all his dust they can't cast it in the matchup against titan shift we can name scape shift and in the matchup against ad nauseum we can name ad nauseum or lightning storm so overall just a really cool card to have and i wouldn't mind having a second one but here we only have one and this definitely feels like an improvement over the first deck but a lot of changes feel like trade-offs like rule of law would have made it so storm was a definite win and same thing with stony silence like stony silence helped us against tron but we already had like four suppression fields so it's kind of worth taking out and putting in nevermore but it's like a trade-off because now we are like one stony silence short and sometimes we're playing tron and we don't pull a stony silence and we lose the game because of it so there's always gonna be trade-offs and i feel like this deck is starting to hit its maximum where like every card you put in or take out is like a trade-off but enough said let's dive right into it and before I forget, if you like content like this, if you like to see modern content, you can let me know by subscribing below because I'm still trying to figure out what my audience likes because this channel is still fairly new. But anyway, here's the gameplay. I hope you enjoyed it because it really was a lot of fun to make. Well, this is an interesting opening hand, but I don't think we can keep it with one land, so we'll mull it. Ugh, this hand isn't much better, but I guess we'll keep keep the land on top. All right, looks like we might be up against control, and that usually isn't good for us. I mean, if it's Grixis Death Shadow, we're good. If it's like Blue Moon, I think we'll be okay. Is it Storm? Ah, Storm. Well, I think our matchup will be just fine against Storm. Well, the win condition is usually Grape Shot, so we'll drop Ruined Halo, naming Grape Shot. We also have to watch out for Empty the Warrens, but Ghostly Prison, I mean, I don't think he can win, period. Unless he bounces one of our enchantments, that could happen. But main deck seems a little bit unlikely. Opponent swings in for two. All right, get Prexian on life. We'll just drop Ghostly Prison and pass the turn. Poor guy, he's just like, man, he just can't catch a break, can he? Peer through the depths, finds a Seaman Visions, and concedes. Well, all right, wasn't that fun. On to game two. For sideboard, we can get rid of our Oblivion Rings, our Suppression Fields, because he's only two colors, so he probably doesn't have that many fetches and not really any activated abilities. Periphery Nodes, Journey to Nowhere, don't need them. Put in Chalice of the Void, Nevermore, Three Rest in Peace, Raider Armaments, so just in case he has the bounce card to, uh, or Echoing Truth to bounce our stuff. So with that, let's go to game two. <laughs> Oh man, Leyline, Ruined Halo, Combo, Greater Armancy, like, I, 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 what more could you ask for? Slide of hand. At some point we gotta pull a second plane. Another slide of hand. Another shrine, alright. Greater Armancy, no, I don't think now's the right time, let's do just rest in peace. Pass the turn. Hmm, I guess we'll just drop Greater Armancy, because if we play this to get extra white mana, it's just not worth it right now. Well, we could get to four white mana if we sack this, but I don't think it's worth it, so let's pass. Uh, jeez. All right, another rest in peace, because you can never have too many rest in peace cards, apparently. I think his only shot is empty the Warrens. All right, so we do have some lands now, and with five mana, let's just drop Sigil. It hits, pass the turn. I just don't really know why he's not playing cards, because, like, it's not like we're stopping him from playing cards. Well, we have two Phyrexian Unlives, two Solemnities. I think that's good. So we have seven mana. Now let's make things kinky. We'll drop Rune Halo, naming, ah, uh, who cares? We'll name Grape Shot. Then drop our second shrine, keeping the new one, getting more devotion to white, going up to 12 mana, and then <laughs> here comes our hand. Woohoo! Isn't this fun, guys? All right, and let's just uh, put the icing on the cake and uh, 
I mean, like the odds of him having board wipe, I think, are close to zero. I think it's worth just going for it. I mean, if he has hour to devastation, then he kind of just deserves to win. So now he starts playing stuff. All right. Hmm, he's going for stuff. Could he use Grape Shot to target all of our creatures? He could, couldn't he? I bet that's what he's doing. But like, what would the point be? Like, okay, like he killed the creatures, but that's not gonna win you the game. Like, he would literally have to mill us to win. And he's gonna deck out faster than we're gonna deck out. Yep, here's Grape Shot. What happened? Why didn't he fire it? What? I guess he didn't have enough, then why didn't it kill anything? What's happening? It wasn't Rune Hill that protected us. All right, I don't know what happened, but let's just uh, swing for the win. Wait, did he Grape Shot himself? I, I don't even know. I think he realized he just couldn't win and just uh, was having some fun in there. But uh, all right, well, that was a pretty good uh, pretty good match right there. I mean, bad for our opponent. It's just like one of those matches where, like, he could, you know, he could play it perfectly and it still it's, he still wouldn't win. You know, it's like when you have Leyline out and your blue-red deck and you can't really destroy enchantments, it's like, what can you do? But at least it was fun for us, right? Yeah, that's what matters, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. All right, opening hand looks pretty good. We'll keep, drop the ley line. Ah, shit, this is gonna be pretty rough for us. I mean, ugh, Tron is bad for us. Cause like late game they do stuff and we do stuff, but like when they have cards that say destroy all colored permanents, it's like, well, yeah. Shoot, and he has a third land in hand. Urgh. Oh man, the suppression fields are good against him also, but it's just, like, it's like, it's just too late. And at least they'll make it, uh, his planeswalkers cost two more to cast their abilities, I guess. Reality smash, I guess that's actually not too bad. I'd rather play the Eldrazi version than like the pure Tron version. Mm, I guess we should just use, uh, Journey to Nowhere, getting rid of Reality Smasher. And plus we don't have to discard anything when we do it because it's, uh, it's a ability from the battlefield rather than from our hand. There's a counter on that thing, all right. Hmm, all right. One card in hand, Phyrexian Unlife. So I guess we'll set up for Entreat the Angels next turn. We'll use this to drop Suppression Field and then Phyrexian Unlife and pass the turn. What the hell this shit? Ah, So that was actually just to put one counter on it. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Oh, Suppression Field, how you do so much work. Ah, oh, Ghost Quarter, oof. It's tempting, but he has one card in hand. I think Entreat the Angels is better. And I think we can get four Angels out, right? So we'll do this, drop another Shrine, keep the new Shrine, get more Devotion to White, and then 11, that makes eight for X. All right, so let's see all his dust. Opponent kills one of them. Well, it's good to know that was his last card in hand. But what did he draw? Opponent sacks the Mind Stone, interesting. No attacks from our opponent, hmm. Well, let's try this. What do we kill? Maybe th this tower here, because that's the last thing he pulled when he searched, right? So yeah, let's just kill that. Actually, before we do that, let's just swing in for 12. Opponent drops to four. All right, now we'll do it. And then kill the tower. You could search for something that could hurt us, but I'm just glad he can't do that combo anymore. Because the last thing I added in this deck was Ghost Quarter because like the original version didn't have Ghost Quarter and like it was one of those cards that trades off but I think it's pretty good because Tron is just such a hard matchup for us. I mean he can pull all his dust now and then like the whole game is just over because he gets Reality Smasher back. Uh, swings in for eight and then you know then it's over. Oh he concedes. All right. All right going into game two I'm gonna get rid of the Ghostly Prison because he doesn't have that many creatures and one Greater Aromancy because I don't think he'll have Destroy, Target, whatever. We just gotta watch out for all his dust so we'll pull in Nevermore to name all his dust. Stony Sounds to hopefully delay him even though he can get the land combo pretty quickly and hopefully we draw some ghost quarters. Uh, and with that, let's go to game two. Oh man, do we keep this? I don't know. I think it's, I don't think we can. Two lands, suppression field's good, but like, where do you go from there? These guys are late game. These cards don't really help us that much. So I think we have to mull. And this is better. Yeah, we got a ghost quarter and stony silence. So that's perfect. Keep you on top. All righty, play that, pass. Mm, I'll draw the temple. Aww. Ratchet bomb. All right, cool. Too bad you won't be activating it. <laughs> stony silence. Aww. Now what's the bigger threat though? Uh, the Urza Tower or the Eldrazi Temple? I think the Temple probably is, right? Although if he has something, he probably would have played it by now if he had Eldrazi. Dang, it's a hard call. Maybe we wait on Ghost God, do we get rid of the Temple? Maybe. It's a bit risky, I think we do it. Uh, so we'll activate it now, getting rid of the Temple. Late game, that could be problematic, but I feel like if we buy ourselves time to get to late game, we should be okay. And if he had, like, stuff to get to this, he would have activated it by now. And now getting, you know, getting the rest of these lands with this out is going to be pretty rough for him. And we'll also drop Suppression Field. Actually, I don't even know. Wait, why did I activate Suppression Field? I don't even know if that was necessary. Opponent swings for one. Sure. Another Walking Ballista. I mean, we could just drop Rune Halo naming Walking Ballista just to say, like, F you to our opponent. There's better things to name. Maybe Thought Not Seer would be better to name. Nah, I think just to buy some time, we'll just name Walking Ballista. I mean, ugh. It's so stupid though. I'll just name it. I mean, oh gosh, I know I'm gonna forget. I, I, uh, walking Ballista or Thought Not Seer. I mean, he doesn't have a block. Uh, you know, here's, here's my thinking. He doesn't have lands and we haven't seen a Thought Not Seer, which I mean, he probably has one in hand, but it will be a while till it comes out. We could just activate or play one of our big cards next turn. So like Thought Not Seer won't come out next turn unless he has Eldrazi Temple. I and mean, what's the odds that he top decks an Eldrazi Temple? I mean, is Walking Ballista really the threat here? I mean, worst case scenario, we take two damage each turn 
I think Thought Not Steer might be a more, I don't know, this is a really hard decision. Because like two of the same card out, that says like Rune Halo, do it. But they're only going to be 1-1s one and they'll never be anything else but 1-1s. One and Thought Not Steer, we haven't even seen it. Like, I guess we have to say Thought Not Steer though, just uh, to protect our hand. Ugh, this is so stupid. All right, pass the turn. Because see, that way, like if he had top deck like Eldrazi Temple, he could have played it, taken this away or that away, and that would have set us back. But uh, I think once we get the Angels out, having these 1-1s one won't make any difference. Expedition map. Opponent swings for two. All right, we'll drop Shrine. And we have five, so what should we drop? We'll drop Sigil and then pass the turn. Plays a land. Oh god, what if he plays another one of these lands against all his dust? Oh my gosh. Phyrexian Unlife. Hmm. Eight mana. So we could drop two angels, or we could wait. Kind of need to finish them off quickly. But the longer we wait, the more angels we get. I guess we wait. We'll just drop the Phyrexian Unlife this turn. I just want to try and finish them before we get something stupid, though. All right. Oh shit. Oh god, no. Oh gosh. What were the odds of that happening? I was just thinking, I was just about to say, like, the odds of him pulling the last one he needs is pretty slim. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You've got to be shitting me. Man, was it a misplay to get rid of the Eldrazi Temple <sighs> instead of getting rid of one of the lands? I mean, I don't know. Well, we're in a pretty bad spot. This will buy us some time. And they usually run two main deck? I can't believe that. What the hell? Chalice of the Void for three. So I guess we're not getting the Slumnity combo off. <laughs> I'm just in shock. What the hell? What were the odds? Of, like he went from like no lands to just getting like all like you know this and this back to back, right? Like what? That's crazy. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god, it was right there. All right, well I'll just drop the angels. I mean, I guess there's a slight chance we'll win, but I would not bet money on it. It's not looking good. We can swing in five times with this. That that'll get the job done. And now Chalice for two. Wow, so this guy is really like the last thing we have to help us win. No swings from our opponent. All right, well, let's just swing in for four. Woohoo, pass the turn. Okay, opponent activates that. Oh shit, they could, worst case scenario, they could just sack these guys and just kill this. And there's Reality Smasher. And there's Thought Not Seer. Wonderful. Journey to Nowhere. Oh wait, we can't play it. All right, well, we'll swing for four. The only way we could win is if our opponent doesn't realize he can kill our angel with these guys, which the odds of that happening are, are, are zero. And he kills our Phyrexian Unlife. Well, on to game three. No change to the sideboard. Opening hand, not what we're looking for. Still not really what we're looking for. We do have a Ghost Quarter, though. Yeah, I guess we keep it. Leyline on bottom. We just really need a Stony Silence. Expedition map. And might as well drop this and save Ghost Quarter. Interesting. No land plays. Hmm... We do have the combo. I don't want to drop Ghost Card to kill this because he can get two mana that way. So we'll drop this and then drop, uh, I guess Solemnity is actually more relevant because he can, it stops Ballista and Chalice. Ratchet Bomb. All right, a couple things we can do here. I think we get rid of the Ratchet Bomb. Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. Um, oh god, what I do? Oh god, this thing can't get counters on it. Um, uh, oh shit. Um, uh, Oblivion Ring the Expedition map. Yeah, there we go. Woohoo, my plan all along. All right, you know, in my defense, I bet you he's gonna try and tap this thing to get counters on it. You know what? It's tricky. Do we hit one of these now? Could have one in hand. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll hit. Hit there, I guess. All right, let's pass the turn. See, look, look, he tried it too. See, I'm not the only one that missed it. So like, that's the thing with modern is like, you keep playing the same decks over and over and over again. So when you have a new card like thrown in the mix, like people just don't like know how to think about it. Like even if you know what it does, like, it, you know, it might be like more subconscious than conscious. Eldrazi? Yep, that makes sense. Put charge, I don't, I, I, I don't understand. Um, I guess we'll just drop Phyrexian Unlife and save the path for something more uh, scary. Pulls a ghost quarter. I wonder if he's gonna try and kill this thing. Please do. Now he's never gonna kill the shrine. All he knows is gonna have more in our hand. Opponent swings for three. Pass the turn. The problem with Ratchet Bomb is if we get the angels out, he can still sack it to kill all the angels. That's the problem. There's Reality Smasher, but as long as we have these guys out, we're fine. Hmm. Four mana, play a shrine, keep the new shrine. All right, by playing the second shrine, we now have five mana. We'll drop that and pass the turn. And the good thing about this is we hit some guys slowly, so this thing here can kill one or two, but like, then we just get more. Opponents at six mana. I'm just worried about him hitting the seventh and getting to all his dust. Hmm, that will set us back. Puts it on that to gain some life. If we could just get like Nevermore, uh, 
Okay, that's not bad. But like, I'm just afraid of all his dust. I'm so traumatized. All right, I'll drop this and pass the turn. Please know all his dust. Oh my gosh. It's like the best card in modern against us. Like there's just no other card that can that can wreck us that hard. Opponent swings in for the life gain, sure. Ruined Halo. I guess we can drop it naming Reality Smasher and we'll swing in for four. Opponent takes four. All right, I'm wondering if they're gonna uh, activate Ratchet Bomb in response to this to kill the angels. All right, so Reality Smasher's named and then we'll pass. No Ratchet Bomb just yet. Puts it on this thing. Hmm. Would we want to block that? I don't think so. And it has Death Touch. Nah. We'll let him gain three life. Another land. Swing in for 12. Uh, I wonder if he realizes he can do this. Swing in for 12. No blocks. He's at 17. It'll be interesting to see if he doesn't know that this can kill the angels. I'm sure he, he, he probably does. He's probably just waiting for it to get more cluttered up. Mm, another land here. That would be seven, right? Yeah. Opponent swings for three. I mean, if he had all his dust, he probably would have fired it by now. Yeah, he would have fired it now because he would have won. Pull a flag stone is not really what we want. We'll try swinging in for 12 again. Opponent's pausing. So I'm sure if he's pausing here, he probably knows he could do it and just considering when he should do it. All right, we'll drop flagstones. Keep the flagstones. Uh, search for a planes so we you know don't have to worry about drawing that particular planes i guess and pass the turn gosh this is so stressful this is the problem with this deck is like you just have to sit there and wait and just hope your opponent can't play around with your enchantments but it kind of makes you feel helpless because it's kind of like you know whether or not we win depends more on our opponent than it does on us opponent swings into four which will put him at 12 which means he's gonna take lethal if he doesn't activate ratchet bomb this turn didn't want to pull that so we'll try swinging for 12 uh is he gonna does he know we can fire it See, is he fire? Oh no, he doesn't know. Oh shit! I thought he was bluffing. He just didn't. oh crap. Uh, wow. I feel like an asshole now. Should I have just told him, like, messaged him, and told him that he could do it? Like, would that have been fair? Like, I don't know. Oh god. We didn't deserve that win, or maybe we did. I don't know. Oh shit. <laughs> wow. Solemnity. Oh uh, wow. So this is what was in his hand. Um, yeah. Solemnity um, has some pretty good matchups, I guess. Can I message him? I don't know. I should probably message him and be like, do I want to message him? I don't know. Oh god. What if he sees this video? Holy shit. In our defense, we kind of we we make mistakes sometimes too, and sometimes we lose a match because of it. Well, we won that match, and that was a pretty rough match for us. I mean, Eldrazi Tron's probably our worst matchup, or maybe one of the worst ones, like in the top three for sure. Anyway. Let's go to the next one. Opening hand's kind of bad because we have two entreat the angels, but we do have a ley line, so I guess we'll keep it, but it's like on the border of keeping. All right, hopefully draw some more lands. Uh, and the problem with Ghost Quarter is that Ruined Halo, Ghost Quarter don't really work well together, but to stop Tron, like we need to kind of have this card, or really more to just delay Tron, because Tron is definitely our worst matchup. Okay. Wow, this hand turned really bad really fast. All right. Hmm. Well, good thing we kept Leyline. That's the one good thing about this hand. We had Leyline, protect against this. Wow, that's not good. All right, pass. Search for tomorrow. Periphery nodes, nope. <laughs> pass the turn. Another search for tomorrow. Escape shift. All right, well, we got this, though. Okay, I mean, suppression field, at least we can play it. Pass. And plus it stops Wooded Foothills pretty, pretty well. I guess it's trying to thin their deck, maybe? Is that why they got Wooded Foothills? Okay, no land still. Yeah. I guess we dump it and treat the angels even though they're gonna see it and know what our win condition is. We have 24 lands in our deck and we still can't, I mean, it's just like, I don't even know. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing killed us. Like, oh man. I mean, the only two cards we have to watch out for are Valakut and Primeval Titan, right? Oh good, we have a land, cool. You know, like as a second line of defense, I think we should drop Rune Halo, naming Valakut just in case. Cause I've seen a lot of these Titan Shift decks that run anti-enchantment artifact main deck. And that could explain why he's trying to thin his deck out earlier. And with that, we'll pass the the turn and there's primeval titan all right that's what the second ruined halo is for all right five white mana ruined halo naming primeval titan and our opponent concedes all right well i guess they just had enough <laughs> but maybe he didn't really have any, any enchantment removal main deck and he's just waiting for primeval titan as a way to getting around it or since docket wasn't working he thought he went with primeval titan but all right at least now we know what his deck looks like i expect there to be a ton a ton of enchantment removal going into game two so we got to be careful all right, for Cyborg, we can get rid of all the Ghostly Prisons because he doesn't have that many creatures and a Periphery Nodes and put in some anti-creature stuff, some just anti-everything stuff, and some more Greater Armancy cards. So with that, let's go to game two. Ah, jeez. All right, well, we have a one-land hand, but we have Leyline, Armancy, and Ruined Halo. Um, we survived last game with the crap hand, so let's keep up the record of crappy hands. At least we'll be consistent. Well, at least we drew a land and pass a turn. All right. Well, we got the combo in hand. Uh, I just need some more lands, so... Well, actually, I just need one more land, because with the, this thing out, we're in pretty good shape, but we have a bunch of enchantments. So we'll play the only thing we can play this turn, which is Greater Aramancy, and pass the turn. Opponent swings for one. Farseek, you're not a land. Well, I guess we're passing the turn. Primeval Titan. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. We could Oblivion Ring it, or we can Rune Halo it. 
I don't think we're gonna use Oblivion Ring on anything else, so... Well, unless he has Chandra. But if he keeps attacking the Bish, it's gonna draw a bunch of lands and thin out his deck. So I guess we Oblivion Ring. I mean, Chandra isn't the most, uh, or the biggest threat. I think we can probably survive with Chandra. Especially if we end up getting this combo out. So we'll use Oblivion Ring, getting rid of the Titan, and I think now that we have these lands, I think the odds of us winning are pretty high. I mean, we do have to be careful. I wouldn't mind naming Valka again just as extra precaution, although these two cards here should be defensive enough. Although I have played Titan Shift decks with this deck where they've dropped two anti-enchantment cards on the same turn and then done the Volokith combo on that turn. So you can never be too careful. Kura Tribe Elder and Summoner's Pack. Hmm. So we got Titan again. So I guess we'll have to drop Rune Halo. Ooh, second lay line. Cool. Four mana. All right, we'll drop Rune Halo, naming Primeval Titan. All right, we'll pass the turn. And no swings from Titan. That's interesting. Did he run out of lands or something? Because, like, at least he, he, he still attack and get the lands. And we top deck and treat the angels. Is this going to be it? Six mana available. So we'll dump all of it to drop four angels. And with that, we'll pass the turn. So with Valakut, he could actually kill a couple of these angels, which is fine because, like, we really didn't even need to pull that card because we have all these here. So I just don't see a line where our opponent can, like, get out of it. Or maybe he was actually saving Primeval Titan the other turn to, uh, to fetch some land so he can double kill these angels because we did show him and treat the angels game one yeah that's pretty clever all right so we will kill an angel that's that's fine and we have protection from the titan so no blocks from us another one of these things cool might as well swing for eight now is it really that urgent to drop a second ley line what are the ozzy kills both of these things and then hits us with valka i think he's i think he's so low on lands at this point that valka isn't that much of a threat to us directly anymore so we'll take the risk we'll just drop the sigil instead and then pass the turn Opponent swings in. I guess they still have more lands in their deck. Gets the Valakut. All right. Is that it, though? Because the angels are still there. And he's at five. Oh, nope. There we go. Wow. Well, there goes both of our angels. Well, we got eight mana. So I suppose we'll drop the next Sigil. And then with the remaining three, we'll drop Phyrexian Unlife. Get two more angels. And we'll see if we can, like, out-angel his Valakuts. I mean, kudos to our opponent for hanging in, because, like, this is not... I mean, I'm sure he's just like, what the hell? <laughs> All right, well, opponent was doing stuff, but I guess he just conceded. Um, there's no way he's getting out of that. No way at all. Next turn, we would have dropped Leyline, another Rune Halo. We probably would have named Valka just in case. Or what if we named Valka or Titan again? One of those two. It's like, we had so many lines of defense against him that, you know, he, he just couldn't, he couldn't win. But, I mean, that's kind of what happens when you have a deck like Titan Shift, which has all of its win conditions in, like, two cards, just Primeval Titan and Valka. And we had answers to both of them. So, you know, decks like that, we just have really good matchups against i mean you know in general titan shift could still beat us you know it's, i would say it's not like we would win every single time i think even with the cards we have to stop them they can still win a good amount of times mainly because they have enchantment removal cyborg like sometimes like even three four cards of enchantment removal sometimes five so it's a dangerous matchup for us but he just didn't seem to pull any of the anti-enchantment cards that he needed. Or maybe he didn't even have any. But yeah, it was pretty fun. Opening hand, not sure about this one. Because, like, there's nothing really special about it. Uh, two Phyrexian Unlifes. But the lands are okay, so we'll keep it. Opponent moles the five. All right. Copper Line Gorge. So he's probably Living Ender Dredge. Hmm. Treat the Angels. Not now. Gosh, I don't know. Like, I really want to drop Rune Halo. But, like, I'm not sure what his deck is. And it's possible that he's not either one of those. Like, I'm pretty sure it is. You know, I... Man, what would it be? If he were Dredge, wouldn't he play something turn one? So that means he's living end? In which case, Runehill doesn't really do much against either of those decks, so I guess we just pass. Hmm, Cycles. I think it is living end. Ah, it is living end. Ah. Well, our matchup against living end should be pretty good. Although I haven't played in a while, and there's been a lot of new cards added since I played living end. But whatever, we'll just drop Phyrexian Unlife and pass the turn. Uh, an island? What? All right. I guess another Phyrexian Unlife? Just in case the first one dies? I don't know. I can't recall a living end deck that ran blue on an island, at least an island. I mean, like, I know there's that one card that's like black blue, the Architects card. But yeah, it's a little bit odd. Another Ruined Halo. Well, we might as well drop it. And if he does pull off living end, and he has Monstrous Caravid that can come back. So I guess we'll just name Monstrous Caravid. All right, pass the turn. And here it comes. Living and So we're already taking 12, man. And he drops this. Hmm. We can get five mana. So we'll drop a Ruined Halo, naming Desert Ceradon, uh, and then dropping Oblivion Ring to get rid of this, I suppose. And that'll buy us a couple turns. Maybe just one or two turns. Actually, a Phyrexian on life. I forgot about that. Ooh. See, he does have new cards. I knew it. All right, we take three. Nine mana max, which means we can drop three angels. So let's do that, and that'll help defend us. All right, pass the turn. Another two. I wonder if he's getting set up for another living end. Opponent swings with everything. I feel like a living end's coming. So I guess we'll double block there. As for told, ah, yeah, and now he's going to drop living end. Uh, no, no living end. All right, this is such a cool card. Like, people need to use it, like, for living end. It's so cool. So you can drop as for told, and then, yep, there's living end. All right, yeah, so it's basically, like, the new, whatchamacallit, violent outburst card, except it's not an instant, but 
But I mean, like, how cool is that? Well, I guess we'll drop Sigil and Leyline, and we'll have one Angel. Can we come back? Now we don't have anything that the Rune Hales are protecting us against. All right, opponent swings in with these three guys. I guess we'll block one of them, sure. And we really need Solemnity right now. We'll just try and hang in. So we're gonna have to block this thing here. We'll be at one, or one poison counter away from losing. Another Minotaur. So I think this might be our best shot. I mean, we could pull and treat the angels, but we can kill one of our lands here. So we kill Flagstones. So that way we fetch for a planes. And then we also fetch for another planes because it died. And I think I have plenty of mana, so we're just gonna do it again to get another planes. So that way we can decrease our chance of drawing a land. Uh, suppression field. Ugh. Darn, that's not what we needed. But if we played this sooner, we would have won. I mean, like, because cycling is affected by suppression field. Like, there's so many good things that we could have done with our deck. I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of butthurt that we lost that one because I felt like we had a really, really good matchup against this guy. But let's go to game two. We're going to have an even better matchup going into game two. So going into game two, we're going to have Nevermore naming Living In. Chalice of the Void so Living In can't be cast. Rest in peace so they can't come back. And Greater Armance in case he decides to, like, kill our enchantments with the Beast, beast was it Beast Within, right? And we're going to get rid of some Rune Halos, Lay Line of Sanctity, Periphery Nodes, stuff like that. So, let's go to game two. Uh, do we keep this? I mean, we do have Suppression Field. Yeah, I guess we can keep. Ugh, it's a little iffy. But Suppression Field will stop the cycling, or slow it down at least. More lands, all right. Well, Suppression Field, pass the turn. Ends up cycling one thing, sure. More lands, all right, pass the turn. Mm, maybe we should have dropped Ghost Quarter. Nah, we need to get to this as soon as possible. Oh, use Simeon Spirit Guide to cycle another thing, all right. It also interferes with fetches, so I think we're okay. Do we drop Phyrexian on life now, or we should probably wait till, uh, we should probably, okay. Um, we'll drop Ghost Quarter. I'll plan on playing this next turn, followed by this. And for now, we'll pass the turn. Man, more lands, what do you know? All right, well, we'll drop Sigil and pass the turn. I don't know why, I'm like really nervous for this match, because I feel like we should be like, we have like every card in our deck to beat this guy. And if we still can't win in the end, it's like, how'll that happen? Ooh, Entreat the Angels. All right, Entreat the Angels, what will he do? Cycles this thing. I mean, I feel like he's setting up for Living End just to kill these guys, so that's fine. No Living End just yet. Drop a Shrine and swing in for 12. Cycles. Opponent drops on the three. Cycles again. So I feel like he's setting up for living end. Uh, I don't think we should play Phyrexian Unlife. And that way, uh, if it does come out, we can get more angels. So um, I guess we pass the turn. More cycling. And they concede. Whew. All right. Oh, man. I was holding my breath there. I don't know. Oh, man. All right. Let's go to the next one. No change to sideboard. All right. This is pretty good. I don't think they can win with this because we have Rest in Peace, Depression Field, and Ghostly Prison in case they make it out. So, like... I think we got it. But now watch, there's a jinx that we're probably going to lose, right? Drop a planes, pass the turn. Shoot, where are the odds he has like a negate or something? Uh, so we drop rest in peace or suppression field. I think rest in peace. Uh, it's a little risky. Counter? No counter. All right. Then we'll pass the turn. Could beast within our rest in peace and try and get in that way. All right, we got to get rid of this land here because like... I'm tired of drawing lands. Oh shit, we don't fetch. Oh gosh, I forgot. I'm such an idiot. Oh, because oh, it gets exiled. We can't. Oh man, I, I need that. I need that. Oh man, what if you lose because of that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, because like normally it gets put in the graveyard and then you fetch for a land, but like there's no graveyard, so you can't fetch, which means we're now down a land from what we should be at, which means the Treat the Angel is going to go off one turn later, which is kind of bad. So I'm an idiot. All right, three mana, drop Ghostly Prison. I mean, the good thing is we have plenty of lands, so it's not too bad of a mistake, but oh, gosh, I hate making mistakes. But without mistakes, we'll never learn. Turn, will we? Alright, Pwn keeps cycling stuff even though it's not going anywhere. Drop this guy, sure. Another suppression field. Let's we'll drop Ghostly Prison so he can't attack us. Or at least he has to pay four to attack us, which is pretty rough. And pass the turn. We take four, sure. Nevermore. Hmm. Could drop Nevermore on Living End, Suppression Field. That would lock him out and treat the angels. Um, he's dropping treat the angels now. Maybe he has a beast within. I mean, what's more what's more of a problem for us? Living End or Beast Within? Probably Beast Within. So I think we're gonna drop Nevermore now. Alright, and then drop Suppression Field and pass the turn. This will hit us again. We'll drop and treat the angels. Yeah, more land. So I guess we just drop one angel to block that guy if he attacks or, or just, just swing it at him in response. And pass the turn. Opponent swings. Um, we're at 12 life. I feel like the longer it goes the more it favors us like i don't think he can wiggle out of this i mean you keep playing creatures but i think it's worth the trade for now chalice of the void we'll just drop naming zero yeah i hope that, is, that doesn't interfere with entry the angels no it shouldn't all right so we'll just name zero and that way living end shut off uh, the only thing you really get us with is just dropping a creature yeah here's another creature hmm. all right well, that's a pretty good pull for us we'll drop that it's got to pull something good in the next couple turns man I don't know, I'm just so nervous with this one. I don't know. I just feel like we should win, and if we don't win, it's like, erg. Because, like, no matter what we put out against this guy, like, he'll always be able to drop threats on the ground like this, or, or just threats in the air. Um, oh, man, now I'm really nervous. Oh, man. Man, opponents 
One turn away from lethal. Oh no, <laughs> why? How? Oh my gosh. How did this, how, how? Oh man, that was probably our best matchup and we lost. What the hell? We literally shut off his whole deck. We shut off his whole deck. Like what would he have drawn next? Uh, why couldn't we draw that next? I don't know. I mean, that would have like won us the game, but whatever. Darn. Oh man, that makes my balls hurt. Ah. Uh. Alright, opening hand. Not gonna keep this. Sure. I just really need to land. I mean, one land hand. Ugh, it's gonna be bad. But I mean, ley lines could be good depending on what matchup we have. Pass the turn. This might be a bit rough. Oh god. Alright. Do you just assume that he's Eldrazi? Yeah, I guess it couldn't really hurt. We'll name Reality Smasher, because even if he's like, if he's just regular Tron, then these cards won't really do anything anyways. Okay. And treat the Angels, not yet. Uh, do we drop our second Rune Halo? I bet you he's Eldrazi Tron, so maybe we'll just drop Rune Halo naming Thought Not Seer? I mean, it feels so stupid. We're just like naming shit that we don't even know is in his deck, but like, whatever. I'm gonna hail this shit. So he is Eldrazi. Hmm, there we go. The gamble has paid off. All right, well, I uh, can't play anything. Opponent swings in for three. Another Mind Stone, sure. All right, cool. All right, drop flagstones, keep the new one, search for a planes. And what's more relevant, Oblivion Ring or Solemnity? I think actually Solemnity because he probably has Walking Ballistas in deck. Opponent swings for three and drops Reality Smasher. Good thing we got that. Ghostly Prison, I think, uh, is that the way to go? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Oblivion Ring, this guy could work because then he won't be able to draw a card from that, but it seems kind of stupid. Yep, that seems more relevant. Uh, let's see, oh, and we got the Phyrexian Unlife combo, cool. But for now, let's just drop Oblivion Ring to kill Endbringer and pass the turn. Oh, there's another one, uh, okay. I think this one's supposed to be two in the deck, but like, he happened to find both of them back to back. Speaking of back to back, here's a second Phyrexian Unlife. All right, pass the turn. Problem is, he's gonna keep tapping that till he pulls all his dust and then like, blows us out. Draws a card, shit. Oh, how wonderful. So now he has both of them back. Whoa, ho. balls. Phyrexian Unlife buys us a turn. Opponent swings in with everything, which is highly unnecessary. Wait, nope, nope, he's pulling back on those, that's right. Oh, and he can ping us, no fun. Blech. All right, looks like we're gonna be going to game two. Phyrexian Unlife, well, we lose. All right, going into game two, we're gonna get rid of Ghostly Prisons, Leyline of Sanctity, and Greater Aramancy. Pulling in these things here, some creature removal, Stony Silences, yeah. And with that, let's go to game two. Oh man, do we keep this? I mean, we do have Suppression Field. I guess we keep. Plus we have Ghost Quarter. Opponent moles the five, and pass the turn. I'm tempted to Ghost Quarter it like right off the bat, but I don't think we can afford to do that. So we'll drop Suppression Field, which means it'll make it harder for us to fire off our Ghost Quarter. Ah, shit. So get another land. Uh, do we Ghost Quarter one of his lands? Probably should, but which one? I don't want to risk all his dust, so I guess we just kill that thing and that will be our turn. Eldrazi Temple. Drops Thought Knots here, but guess what? You can't target us. <laughs> uh, mm, suppression Field. Another Mind Stone. Hmm, could drop Periphery Nodes. Yeah, I guess we could. It'll kill that, but problem is we won't be able to draw a card because this thing will prevent him from targeting us to draw. Expedition Map. But he'll have to pay four to activate it. Although he has four, actually. We take four, and then on our turn, Periphery Nodes will take care of that. Ooh, nice. And with six mana, we'll drop Sigil, and then we pass the turn. Uh, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Ugh. Mmm, so OP. It's not fair. Alright, might as well pass. Opponent searches, drops Endbringer. That's fine, we have Oblivion Ring. Killing Endbringer, and we'll just pass the turn. Why do you have to exist? Who made this card? Like, why would someone think of a card like that? I mean, like, what were they... <sighs> Whatever. I mean, it's a cool card, but like, I mean, I don't know. Kind of a bit one-sided when you have like these colorless old Drazi decks and then you have people who just want to make these honest decks, like these honest enchantment decks that can't be targeted by anything. Well, they have a ton of mana now. Whoa, Worm Coil Engine. All right, well, we have Oblivion Ring to deal with it. Ooh, shit. Oh, man. Uh, I guess we gotta let Worm Coil Engine slip out for now. And uh, let's play and treat the angels. All right, so if we survive, we can drop Oblivion Ring, getting rid of this, and he won't get the little guys because he'll be exiled. But can we survive? Opponent swings in for six, no blocks. Oh, my God. Well... The fun train just keeps on rolling. We do draw a path, but like, I don't know. 
Might as well let him search now. I mean, what's the point? We kind of have to just sit back because we're going to need to double block this guy if he attacks and then block that guy if he attacks. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Draws a card. Mattery Shaper. No attacks from opponent. I mean, it's so crazy how this thing untaps like every turn. We have Phyrexian Unlife. Do we just risk it and swing in for 12? I mean, we could. But it's, even if we dealt 12 this turn, 12 next turn, I'll still put him at 2. Gosh. Or we can swing with one. Yeah, I guess we kind of have to go for it. We'll swing in for one uh, with one of them. I mean, it's kind of a tough call. Then if he swings in with everything, we block one, we draw a card, take eight, go down. Uh, yeah, swing in with one. All right, no blocks. And then we'll drop this thing past the turn. Opponent draws more cards. He'll just keep drawing cards till he pulls another all's dust. Another expedition map. Ah, shit. Erg. Well. Did not think it would get to this this quickly. Block one of them. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't really matter. Because, like, we either top deck Solemnity or we don't. Oh, shit. Whatever. That way he doesn't draw a card. Solemnity. Hmm. Interesting. He could just keep pinging us till we have enough poison counters. We can swing in next turn with everything, and he'll still be at two. I think our best bet is just to not do anything. Is, uh, do we swing with one of them? No. I can't swing with it now, because then he'll, we can double block, double block. Let's see. He's going to put him in a position where he has to make a tough choice. If we swing with one, he'll swing in with everything most likely. And that could be bad. Yeah, it's a tough call. I think we have to hold back. Really, our best bet is just pulling Solemnity. Well, doesn't even come to that. All right. Well, all is dust. <laughs> what do you know? Well, with that, I guess that wraps up our spree. Well, as much as I wanted to go 5-0, I mean, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And I'm not the kind of guy to, like, put out a video that makes it seem like the deck's better than it actually is. So, I mean, looking back, like, Tron will just always be a bad matchup for us. I mean, threw in some Ghost Quarters. Those help. Stony Silence, I took one out. Maybe we should put one back in. And also, like, maybe another Nevermore might be good. Because, like, this All is Dust card just keeps wrecking us. And it's, like, only that card. Without All is Dust, like, we could actually win a lot of these matchups. So maybe we just need more Nevermores. Man, I'm still butthurt about that Living End deck. But, like, we should have we should have beaten that guy. Like, we could have beaten that guy. But we just got, like, crappiest pulls in the end. And, like, we were one card away from Phyrexian Unlive and we would have beat him. <sighs> It won more than it lost, for sure. And it has a lot of really good matchups against the top decks. So I shipped this deck. I feel like this deck is is good. I mean, it's kind of got unlucky in some situations. Like, all is dust. I mean, we had five angels out. I mean, I don't know. There's a couple things I'd want to change with this deck. I think maybe Wrath of God might be better than Periphery Nose. Like, Periphery Nose is cool. But, like, I don't know. It feels a little underpowered in a lot of situations. Like, it works out well in our deck because we don't have any creatures besides the angels. But, like, there's a lot of situations where i just rather have a Wrath of God. Like, if we had a Wrath of God in the end, like, I mean, the angels were out. But, I mean, at least we could clear the board so i don't know maybe one of you guys want to make this deck and see if you can optimize it maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe there's a couple cards we could swap out but overall i mean this deck hasn't gotten boring to play so far i mean it's pretty fun compared to most decks i play like this is like so unique and different like i guess you could say it's kind of like enduring ideal but it's not I and mean, they both use devotion to white but like other than that there's not that many similarities and devotion to white and enchantments but the way they finish the way they interact with their opponent's deck like they're just different so it's pretty cool to have a unique deck like this and plus angels like angels are pretty awesome like like if you want to make an angels deck deck in modern this is probably your best shot or something along the lines of getting a crap ton of white mana and dumping it but anyway that's all for now well i hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more content like this like more modern content you can let me know by subscribing below because sometimes i'm not really sure if people like modern videos because there's times where i put out modern videos and no one watches them and it seems like more people are interested in standard so i guess i'll just make whatever the subscribers want me to make anyway that was pretty fun and uh, i hope you have a great day